Hey guys, Lovians here, and today we are going to be reacting to Reddit. I have never been on Reddit before. I don't know what Reddit is. I know it's like a website where people share stories, but I've never actually been on it before. But I can't find any Thanksgiving horror games. And there's some stories here. So let's read them. I've heard Reddit is pretty scary. Story number one. The barn. This is a weird story. This that happened back when I was a teenager. My grandparents had a really small farm. Located a small hollow. It wasn't a commercial farm. Just something. They had to support themselves. Sounds normal. However, when they got older, it was more difficult for them to maintain the barn. It's normal. They quit using the barn. They just sort of sat there and was used as a storage area. Every Thanksgiving and Christmas, we would go to our grandparents' house. This story took place thanks on Thanksgiving. I was about 15 years old and that's the age where I began not enjoying hanging out with the adults in the family anymore suddenly listening to the story of when you were a kid my parents were kids it's just not entertaining anymore sorry my feet are freezing okay that's fine. We had Thanksgiving dinner early, around 2 p.m. Afterwards, I began to feel a bit astray. I let my parents know that I was going to explore the hollow for a bit. I don't know what a hollow is. I'll Google it after. A little bit. It had been a while since I had gone done so. I didn't even think of asking my younger brother and sister if they wanted to go. It was fine, because honestly, I felt like being by myself. I knew that I really didn't have much, a lot of time to explore before it got dark. So I set out to make sure I knew how far I had could go and still get back before the sun had set. I didn't go do the greatest job at it, though so you've seen, you've ever been out exploring in the woods, you might probably know what I mean. I have. You can get easily fascinated with the woods and the hills and lose track of time. It got very dark. Very dark. I was anywhere close to being home. That reminds me of the story. So when I was younger, I went to a camp, and um, I was in the woods. I was supposed to be going to um, a game of some sort. Dodgeball. It was a dodgeball tournament. It was late, like this dark. You see right now, and I was lost in the woods, and I, all I had was my tablet, so I didn't even have a flashlight. I always only go around like this with anyways um I was lost panicking all alone didn't know where I was and then some owl with an owl was on a tree right beside me really close <laughs> little me is like can you show me the way little owl and the owl actually flew in the direction I needed to go I learned this after but that reminds me of this story reminds me of that <laughs> let's get back to it By this time, I got back to the farm. It had been dark for at least an hour. I never had ever been out by the barn when it was dark outside. It looked incredibly creepy. From a teenage, being a teenage boy, of course I liked scary things. The thought that occurred to me 
the bottom was creepy looking from the outside, it might be really creepy on the inside. So I decided to check it out. Getting into the bar was simple. My grandparents were la- r- um, rarely locked the door of their house, much less saw to lock the barn. Uh-oh. They lived a really safe area with the crime was pretty much unheard of. The barn did not have any of those heavy wood locks on it. I honestly have no idea what they are called, but I was able to pull out the wooden locks on it, sorry, wooden beam up. When I opened the door, it made a horrible loud creaking noise. I knew my grandparents had likely not been in the barn for years. I was surprised I was able to get the door open at, at all. I figured the hinges merely rested shut. As I mentioned, the barn was old and even it was in use, my grandparents would only have been in it during the day. So there was no light, thank god. I live in an era of smartphones, though, because of course I had a flashlight on my smartphone. My story I didn't. I turned on the flashlight and marveled at the creepiness. If dark is creepy, then a minor amount of light is so much creepier. I was fascinated by all the tools, so many sharp implements, most of them were hanging up. However, there was a small hatchet laying on a wood bench. Hmm. I think someone's been living in this barn. It was discolored. Sorry. And on a closer inspection, I realized it was covered in dry blood. I don't know much about killing animals, but I knew my grandparents used to do it often. Chickens and pigs and stuff. So I figured the hatchet was used for that. And they never cleaned it. The barn had a loft that was filled with hay. I decided to climb the ladder and check it out. When I was shining the light around, it looked like something buried in hay. Uh oh. Before I predicted, I think there's some either somebody living up there or someone was murdered up there. My prediction. Let's keep reading. Where was I? I was wondering if it was another tool or something, and decided to check it out. Going over it, I began moving the hay, and I screamed. The empty eye sockets of a long dead corpse. Ew. Or stand, stay, what? Staying directly at me. Staring? I don't know. I fell backwards and nearly fell off the loft. I quickly climbed down the ladder and ran out of the barn without closing the door. I rushed into the house and told my parents and grandparents about what I'd seen. My father, a huge man like Hulk Hogan sized, really went out and confirmed what I told him. My grandparents phoned the sheriff. The body had been in the loft for about three years. Ew, wouldn't that smell? It had several hatchet wounds on on it, the police told us. The one that had been seen on the bench. The hatchet had picked up. So not only had I found a dead body, but I held an actual murder weapon in my hand. <laughs> Yikes. That was truly disturbing to me, but I was not nearly as disturbed as the realization my grandparents had that lived in that house for three years not knowing there was somebody dead in the barn. No one was ever caught, and to this day, we have no idea who killed them and why. Wow. Eh, it's not that scary. Oh look, a TikTok notification. They're kind of long to be honest, I don't want to read another one.
Let's see. I heard about the no sleep stuff. Yeah. I've never used Reddit. I don't know how this works. That's really long. Oh look, there's an abbreviation. Thank you. 359. He said, so basically he could do anything with this notebook. He could make a building collapse just by drawing it, or does the notebook effects only apply to people he has mind control? Hmm. Google something else. That's not short. Ooh, look what's called cat. Let's read this one. Meow. Nancy looked over at her cat tree, noticing two large yellow eyes staring at her from afar in the darkness. She smiled at the antics of her cat. Fluffy. <laughs> My cat's name is Fluffy. And went back to her TV show. It was normal for Fluffy to ask for food at midnight. <laughs> Fluffy did that too. My Fluffy. Her greedy cat Nancy becoming a night owl. Meow. The voice insisted, two small white paws appearing from the lip of the little compartment she appeared from. She sighed, staring at the cat again in frustration. However, she noticed Fluffy's eyes were wide and scared. Her paws were digging in the carpet. Dun dun dun, there's a ghost. What's wrong, bud? She asked, curiously approaching the cat tree. Cat retracted further into its hiding spot with sharp eyes fixed on the house behind her. Nancy turned, feeling her heart beat quicken. Fluffy was very calm, very calm cat, and it was not like her to be so aggressive. What the? She stuttered, noticing a tuxedo cat perched on the back of the couch. It started with her eager green eyes at the top of its body exposed. Fluffy hissed vigorously, viciously, one of the two. Behind her pupils widened. I don't know what that word says. I think it's shakened, sharkened, whatever. What was I? Rapidly. Like it was on the hunt, the unknown cat was oddly calm for being hissed at. Demon cat. Demon cat. Uh, well, let's get you out of here. She stopped halfway across the room, staring in shock as the cat crawled over 
the back of the couch, its body extending. Hmm. Its body slid across the floor like a snake. Ooh, scary demon cat. Black fur shining like skates across. Ooh. Nancy took a few stunned steps backwards, tipping over the tree, being latched across the floor. More of its endless body wrapped around her torso and squeezing. Are you a snake cat? Mm, so yeah. <laughs> I'm just doing that's gross. It has been more of an accident. Mm. Trigger warning or whatever. Squeezing with its impossible strength. The paws perched on her shoulder and her ribs. That's violent. You can read it if you want, but I'm not seeing it. Her vision slowly darkened and disappeared underneath the black furred coils. The cat laying down atop its furly, faintly struggling prey. It shot one final glance at Fluffy. No, not Fluffy. Still hiding in the tree. We should have been braver, it mocked in her own voice before uncoiling, leaving a smell, a smear on the floor where Nancy once stood. It followed itself behind the couch. The endless coils vanishing into thin air. Somewhere in another home, ember eyes stared from behind the window pane. What stray what's stray doing here? Yeah. I like that story. It's kind of. There's a few spelling mistakes, but. Um, credits to them. That's a cool story. Well, and time is gaming time. Till next time, guys. This is Flapkins signing out. Bye, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Fluffy Ween. And stay safe. And don't forget to subscribe and wear your mask.